It was a jet ski fight in Hawaii or oh something. Oh my god, how do you gather all this information? You're gnarly. Because of the pandemic, international shoots were essentially a non-existent possibility until we were able to get government approval to go to Portugal to profile big wave surfer Maya Gabera. COVID still had Europe locked down tight. But when a guest says they can do the interview, you go. Getting into Portugal was surprisingly easy. More than two months, dozens of government officials and a few tears later, we did it. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks Ashton. Why'd you move to Nazareth? I moved to Nazareth because here breaks the biggest waves in the world. When you ride a wave and you hear that crowd, it's like you cannot miss it. Nazareth is probably the most beautiful place I've ever been in the world. Well, the people were nice and the food was delicious. You go to Pangaea. Amazing. Octopus. What? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Absolutely the place that I want to go back to the most. What do you like about the place you now live? Ah, oh, look around. How many people are here right now? <laughs> right. I like to be living in a place that has this rawness um, from the ocean perspective. Maya nearly died on that beach, so it's crazy to me that she returned there just years later and surfed two world record waves and now lives there too. On the wave that uh, I guess almost took your life, Take me through like everything you remember from that day. The only sensation I still had was hearing because that's the last one you lose before dying. Like literally I went to the black, which I don't know if it's the other side. And who are these guys? This is Nasa from Nazare. This is Stormy from Stormy Weathers. I got Nasa when I was struggling with um, my anxiety disorder and I always wanted a dog. I had a dog when I was little. What else do we have here? We have the, the world record. Oh, there you of, go. Yeah, of 2018. That was That a, was my first world record. Uh, and where's the other one? The other one never arrived. <laughs> We're outside getting ready to start doing the interview and all of a sudden there's construction noise. Graham sends me over there and says, hey, get them to stop. Okay, Graham. Might have been some money exchanged. The final result was we paid the construction workers to stay quiet while we filmed the interview. The record setting wave, you know, biggest wave surfed in 2020. You had said you've never been so close to such a powerful explosion. Uh, explain that the noise that that wave made when it broke right behind me um, was the scariest thing I've ever heard. And I felt humbled. <laughs> I felt like for a second I didn't really want to be there. <laughs> the year prior, she surfed the biggest wave of the year by man or woman, nearly 75 feet. That makes you kind of think she's fearless. And then I remember being up on the cliff on our bikes overlooking the beautiful ocean and her saying, I wouldn't risk my life for it. You know, I'd rather live another day. For me, it matters more to have a second day than to peek at my sport. I'm old. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> Not fearless anymore. That part of the conversation really surprised me because it was inconsistent with who I thought she was coming into the taping, uh, but make no mistake, she is as much of a badass as it gets and has broken all kinds of, uh, of barriers for her gender in progressing the sport. When you turn professional, even if you are a while far from their performance, you start becoming a threat because you start getting uh, media space, sponsorship space, and that's money that is being relocated, right? So um, at some point you can ask yourself, would that be to the man if a woman wasn't here? Yeah. And probably. How often were you discouraged from pursuing your dreams? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> I mean, I was discouraged by the environment all the time. We put her through maybe some of the most interviews and activities and access that we 
have since I've worked on the show. So she was game for everything. Have you ever peeked behind the boat? Uh, like once. Perfect. I want to say it was like 10 or 11 attempts. And there wasn't even one that I was like, oh, this is the one. Every single time was just like, a mess. Everybody's looking on and they're all trying to be nice, but you can just see it in their eyes. Like, what the hell are we doing out here with this kid? I seem very capable out there, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, totally. And we got the best end to an interview ever. Thank you very much. Thank you. There's nothing else I can add to this interview. <laughs> you know everything. Anything I didn't ask that we should have come off. <laughs> 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 <That's the best> <laughs> I think that'll definitely make the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>